Dragi Arča Kulaši, dragi gledatelji, dragi svi, dobrodošli na još jednu Art Čakulu. A u ovom slučaju ovu ćemo Art Čakulu voditi na engleskom jeziku sa nešto simultanog prevođenja. Te smo kao zajednica koja je primarno online u stanju spajati i povezivati umjetnike cijelog svijeta, te smo danas kao gosta pozvali jednog švedskog slikara Sebastiana Grönvala. Tako da ću ja sada preći na engleski, danas i naš gost razumije. Hello Sebastian, hello everybody that are joining us and that are watching us on YouTube. Allow me to present Sebastian Grönvala, hello. Uh, Sebastian Gronval, and let me just point out that as an online community uh, such as Archakula is, we have this beautiful opportunity to connect whole world, and uh, today Sebastian is joining us from Sweden. So Sebastian Gronval is a Swedish artist born on Gotland, and he's well known for his landscape painting, uh, paintings which, he, um, which actually feature marine themes and uh, landscapes. And also sometimes he is uh, inspired with architecture and history of northern parts of Europe. He is primarily, primarily known for uh, painting big scale landscapes. And uh, he has a very special way of connecting uh, reality and abstract uh, aspects in a certain painting, which leads us to this uh, vision of a certain atmosphere and very good feeling of a cold north. Uh, his uh, art, was shown in many exhibitions throughout the whole world. And, and one, I think one, but he will tell us uh, himself, uh, one of his paintings was featured in American movie. So uh, I will let Sebastian tell us uh, everything about himself now. And uh, he will also lead us through his studio here on Gotland in Helvi, I believe the place is called. So thank you, Sebastian, for joining us once again. And the mic is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome to my studio here in, uh, in Gotland. Uh, um, I have an old barn uh, that I made, it, uh, made it to, into a studio. Uh, and uh, also I have my own gallery at the bottom of this building. So uh, that's a good, uh, good idea because when I have my guests uh, I can like first uh, show my, I have a showroom, like small gallery, like um, to show my stuff. And then uh, also I can bring them up here and talk about, uh, you know, the, my materials and the craftsmanship that that's, uh, that really interests me. Uh, so it's not always about the ideas and stuff. It's, it's also like people want to hear about the craftsmanship and materials and everything. So that's, that used to be a good thing. Um, yeah, I grew up here in Gotland uh, in the first place, and then when I was young, we moved to Stockholm, uh, the big capital, what do you call it, uh, in Sweden, and uh, we were uh, going back to Gotland uh, during summers, and uh, I always like wanted to stay here, uh, quite close to the nature and everything, that was very important for me. So I never felt like very happy with living in town. Uh, so as, uh, now when I, uh, like when I was 25 years old, I met Elina and she's my girlfriend, mother to my children. Uh, we, I have two, 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 two children um, and uh, we moved to Gotland and that, that was a really big dream for me. So now we have been living here for, for like three years, uh, two and a half years and made this possible uh, for me also like to, to work in bigger scale. Uh, so that's really nice. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you, if you, if you said that, but um, uh, I'm, I, I went to school, uh, a three years education at the Swedish Academy of Realist Art here in Sweden. Uh, that was a trap art. It's, it was uh, based on the traditions, um, like Sorn. If you if you know Sorn, uh, Carl Larsson, Bruno Liljefors, and those guys, they also did this kind of education. But back then, it was like for five years. You study for five between five or seven years, 
or something like that. We, this was an atelier, like three years I, I went to school. Uh, it was really good because uh, even though I have been painted, painting long before school and exhibit stuff, uh, I, I always felt like I wanted to go and uh, to find a good school where I could learn so uh, much more. Of course, there's so much I didn't know I didn't know. So <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it was a really good thing. Though uh, the dangerous thing is when, when you go to school, that's really like strict in that way with tradition, the craftsmanship and everything. You, it's easy to stick to those rules because uh, everything is built upon rules, right? Um, you know, you learn how to draw, you, you start, start out, starting out with like a copy Charles Barg's study stuff. And that's like, draw, draw, you try to just copy a drawing in 2D. Uh, and you sit, sit down a couple of months and work in that. And then someone comes up and give you a critique every day. And like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is right. But it's not very often you heard about, I heard like, this is right, this is right. It's just, this is wrong. And, and uh, this was a good start in that school because, because you, you didn't want to like spend two years and then drop out because it was too much. Uh, so I think that was a good idea to start with, very tough school. And the, the day that, that was, I was supposed to say uh, that the dangerous part in this school is like, if you, if you don't uh, work with your own stuff uh, home, back home or in your own studio, trying to like uh, stand free and use only a couple of tools, you know, uh, you can end up doing the, the academy stuff, you know, and that, nothing wrong with that, but if you, I wanted to like grow as an artist, being free and able to, to pick, uh, you know, uh, make my own style and, and grow, make it grow. Uh, so that was a very important thing. But I, I, I uh, when I was finished, fish, finishing school, uh, it was like, I, I felt free uh, and I could like put in so much more time in my own stuff. And that was really good. Uh, and especially uh, when I lived in Stockholm uh, before this, I, I used to spend very much time painting when I was here and then bring back uh, plein air products, plein air studies and stuff that I can work with inside my small studio in my department in Hunstull in Stockholm. Uh, I'm just speaking. <laughs> and I, I when I was go ahead. Please continue. Yeah. It's very interesting and we are enjoying it. Okay, so. good. Well, when we were living in Stockholm, uh, in a very small department, apartment, I had a big piano and I had a walk-in closet that I uh, made into a studio. And it was like four or five uh, quadrat meter. It was really, really, really small. But I made, there was a small a, a window with northern lights. And then I had a, a good uh, <laughs> lamps and everything, lightning, and, uh, and shelves that I could put up and everything. And I could like step back into my bedroom to see, you know, as a whole in my bigger paintings. Because it didn't stop me from painting big pink pictures. And uh, now I know how to like appreciate a bigger space like this. Uh, and it's, it's really good, uh, I think. Uh, what should I say? Um, I so, sorry, yeah. Sebastian, for jumping in. Uh, tell us a bit uh, more about plain air and uh, why do you like nature and why do you do uh, landscapes? And what do you feel when, while doing landscapes and similar? Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's, I always felt something uh, for nature, it's really everybody's doing it, of course, uh, something's happening when you're out there. Um, but I felt like a very calm in nature and it's, it's like, uh, it's freedom for me. It's always represented freedom. Uh, when I went to school as a, as, a, as a child, I always felt like locked in some, somehow. And also in town, 
uh, everything was lo like I felt locked in. So when I when I now today when I go out to nature and having it close, I really want to be there and capture and trying to work like capture the the scenes as they are, uh, being like uh, like a documentary. Uh, I really. I really like appreciate the reality. Not it's not like in, I want to copy stuff. It's not like I am gonna paint this exactly. I I, I uh, still it's it's uh, I I have uh, I want to be free in my my way of seeing. But it's something that that really uh, I really appreciate. It's it's the nature uh, to be alone also in nature, standing there and painting. Uh, and then, and, and the people talk, when we're talking about plein air painting, and uh, just like it's about uh, go out and paint, um, people associate it with uh, being relaxed, having a great time. It should be this and this kind of weather. And often you should, like, you, you pick a really beautiful scene. It's nice. You can stand there and dream. Uh, for me, it's not like that. It's, for me, it's like going out to run, or or like it's it's a re it's really tough sometimes, and it's uh, two uh, one and a half like two hours maybe. It's one hundred percent dedication. So uh, after those hours, um, I have like tunnel. I see you know tunnel tunnel seeing, and I'm I'm driving home, and I feel you know, those dopamines and everything uh, coming and I feel really good. And, that, and then this, so it's like after my, my painting session, I feel really good. Even sometimes when I'm coming home, coming home with a bad painting, I, I feel like I've done this and, and I'm appreciating the feeling of being outside painting. So, um, and, and the, Another thing we played in painting is that in my school, we learn uh, why it's so important to try to capture light uh, at, the, at, uh, at the place and working from life. Working from life can be quite tough sometimes as you know, the uh, lights is changing very fast and very, it's very like changing the weather. Sometimes it's blowing much, uh, and it starts to rain and everything. So I really try to think about what kind of weather uh, it should be in a special scene. And also, like, and I, I can, I can, I look at my phone and the weather and following it, and I know when I have to go back to that spot to have to pick up some more information at uh, those days when you can do that. But sometimes it's just that moment, those two hours, it's a special weather when I can't uh, come back and make, you know, come back and do more, then I have my photo reference. So for this painting, for example, I, I always have uh, in the middle of my painting process, when I establish my, my, my lights in, the, in my painting, I need to have like, I always take a couple of, photo reference also uh, and uh, that I can work from here in my studio. But the most important thing is the, uh, the fundamentalist is in the painting I'm coming home, home with uh, from outside. Uh, there you have the, the fundamenta uh, foundation. Uh, so it's small. It's just a matter of very small paintings that sometimes turn out to be big paintings. Like behind me here, I can show you some things. Uh, I have my wall here with small uh, plein air paintings, and this is uh, this kind of weather. For example, it's not very. It's a small painting, and it's not a matter of. Uh, I, I just don't need the perfect uh, composition and everything. And I, I can't like be able, and I don't have time to think about uh, every detail in the drawing, the composition every, every time. It's just the most important thing is to capture 
the light, the colors, uh, and uh, the re relationships in, in the painting. Um, you know, lights and darks and everything, and the colors. But if I, if I just took, like, went there and took a picture, I, I couldn't get those, uh, you know, um, those right values and everything and colors that are there when, when you're outside. But it's really tough when I work in sunlight, for example, because then I have, I either have, maybe I have my sunlight in, in my back, in back and it's sunlight on my painting when I'm, when I'm painting, or I have it like uh, right behind me. And that makes it also harder because then I work in shadow on my painting. So I always like have to think about how to compensate when I, when I look at my painting in, in direct sunlight, it's going to be much richer when I come home, more saturated colors and everything. And when I work in like shadow, I'm not going as deep, you know, in the darks as I should do. So I have to compensate and think about that too. Any questions? Uh, <laughs> that seems like just, a lot of lot of hard work, actually. I was wondering, but you you covered it actually. Uh, do you prefer to work on a, a cloudy, overcast, or sunshine, uh, or do you place yourself in a shadow then if it's too much sun, or how, do you even choose a day like that, or do you have a feeling? Aha! Uh -huh, I would like to go and paint now, and uh, uh, then you check the prognosis and the weather, and then you decide. How, or, and how do you choose a place? I, I choose a place from uh, often I, I'm co I can go out and search for a place by car, uh, searching for a place. And I imagine how it could be uh, during a storm or something like that. And I know how, how the with wind direction is everything. Sometimes it's the best, of course, when you have like maybe a storm, a dr drama out there and I can find those spots and everything and be spontaneous and just like jumping out of the car and paint. But often I, I need to have a plan. And I, I, um, I really appreciate both, I, I, I could say. Uh, I really appreciate the drama, uh, like in this bigger painting. Um, and I can show you another thing here. Uh, here, here I have very like like this it's it's a kind of cloudy here but it's in its storm and it's very simple uh, drawing wise I mean, it's just because i wanted these colors you know i wanted to capture these colors and how dark this should be against the these cliffs and everything uh and here was the hardest thing is when it's sunny and then no sun for 10 minutes and then it's sun again so I have to decide, then I have to decide when, what, I, what, what to capture. Like, okay, should it be sunlight or not? I have to make a decision. Okay, I want sunlight. Then the first thing I have to do is establish the, uh, the um, shadows, shadow shapes. So what to do then, uh, I, have, I squint, squint down and establish that. And then I can work more with the colors and everything. Of course, the sun is going to affect the colors as well. So it's, it's kind of, that's also why I want a photo reference to be, be able to remember and establish as long as I have the colors right. Um, yeah, it's, it's not very, it's not, it's not very simple this. Uh, and also I, I, I like, I can appreciate the, the drama in this calmness here. And I will show you also, I, I'm making a bigger picture out of this. And this, this is a stu study just, uh, and it's, it's really cool to sometimes uh, work with uh, calm, uh, as I see it though, uh, calm uh, scenes. And then also like, then the total difference in, in uh, like in a uh, yeah, storm or something like that. But uh, it's all, I'm very lucky because I, I really appreciate when it's not summertime and everything is green and every, it's not like everything is green, of course, but 
it's so saturated everything in summer and it's it's warm and nice and everything but and i should be out there maybe it's it's no logic like because <laughs> here in Gotland you also have those ochre colors and it stays the same all year round some colors uh, are gonna be the same but I have my guests here coming in summer every day uh, and I have to show I, I want to show my stuff and talk about my stuff the craftsmanship and then go out having my paintings done uh, during winter time it's like it's fall it's spring uh, uh, it's it's when I'm painting the most, and I like I like that that it's like separated a little bit. Would you so right now, right now, right now I'm painting very much. Uh, would you please show us the big painting behind you a little bit closer yeah. and talk about it a little bit? Yes. Because I'm amazed of how, how much details there are when you actually look closer. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I need to have something to point out things with maybe uh -huh. I uh, <laughs> like this. <laughs> um, no, but uh, this is uh, from Smyrian. It's quite close to my, my home. Uh, and I, I could go down there and, and pick so many uh, different scenes and I have done that. I have done so many paintings from Smyrian, I don't know. And I started to call them like Smyrian in September, Smyrian in October, Smyrian in January. And I have lots of Smyrian uh, pictures uh, also going on. So, that, so that's, that's pretty fun. And uh, what, what I like about Smyrian uh, is those, for example, you can look where, as, where I'm standing, painting this, I can look like 300 and like 300 degrees in that way also seeing a big, uh, uh, big interesting scenes. Uh, and this is like St. Holm, and it's a big island uh, here called, uh, called Ytterholmen. And there is a forest, the cliffs, and I have done also like very calm scenes from this place. Um, actually, and here the composition, composition-wise, it's it's often if and I often I get a, a feeling that just it just feels right, and then when I started to like talk and thinking about the composition, there used to be things that are are working. It's the lines, uh, it's all, it, it lines up to the main focus. Uh, what's the first thing we're looking at in this picture? Uh, for me, uh, it's here. And then I also like what's there. I look in here. And then also the clouds are leading down to here. So everything leads down to here. And uh, also the lines in, in the rocks. Sometimes it's not what, like what I want. I can change it, of course. So it leads up to the, the main focus. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, this is um, dramatic, I think. And I will work, I'm working on it. And I have to put something in here, because right now it's, it's like, it's going down here. When I squint, for example, it's not very nice to look at something that goes down here. It's, I want it, I want to pick it up, this line, break it up, and place something here. For example, like that's, uh, and then also I'm going to, going to work on this area. It's just, uh, it, it shouldn't happen too much here, but uh, I will put in some more information. But uh, as I put, if I put it in too much here, you know, I'm going, it's going to affect the main focus. And we, that's often a, um, that's a thing we should think about sometimes composition wise, that we, we need to not like uh, start over, overdoing this part, for example, when it's not very, to, but like it's, it's going to, when I work with this part, it's going to um, affect the, the um, your, your, 
you're seeing or how you see this picture. That, so this should be like, you, sh you should be here and then you can travel around a bit in, in the painting looking for stuff. And I, I, I really appreciate when you can find some details here and there, but it shouldn't be details all over the place. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yes. Sounds sounds yeah very logical and uh, it's amazing how much work how much uh, thinking you are putting into one landscape uh, and also what you have to go through with the weather and everything. I was curious: is this one showing uh, uh, winter time or closer to the spring time? This is uh, September actually, this but September. it could also like it could be uh, in middle of the winter. Yeah. This one, so that's. Uh, it's totally free, um, up to you to decide. But it's uh, it's it's September, mm. strangely enough. Yeah. Um, should I uh, maybe talk about another big painting or something? Yes, please do, or take us around, as you said before. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. I can. Uh, let's see. This is a okay. spacious studio. What did you say? It's a spacious <laughs> studio. Yeah, I have. Uh, excuse me, sir. If it, I it, see what I am recording, no, excuse me. Yeah, we see. Do you see now? Yeah. Here is my wall of uh, small like studies I made outside. So it it's like this. And when I have my gallery guests, they, they used to come up here and those smaller stuff. And I sell those also, uh, of course. And uh, yeah, this is an this is example of my smaller like uh, paintings on limestone. And uh, Gotland is made of limestone. It just stands on limestone. So, Here's a lots of limestone and I can work. Uh, I, I do small origins like this. You can hang those and you can also like on an easel. And here I have my easels like this. Um, yes. And just, yeah, 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 I can show you down here first. And here is uh, like my lo launch there, there, uh, mm -hmm. around. And uh, I, I made a fire here. Uh, like this, uh, and still it's an, a lot of things to do here. I will uh, make the ceiling, uh, thing, paint the ceiling and things like that. And then you come down here and now it's not very clean down here, but it's still. So yeah. here's a, here's the work I, I'm working with this one for example mm -hmm. on a place called Fröjel uh, and it's a tough one because I have the, the brightest brightest area and the darkest area uh, where the you know here with the tree uh -huh. <laughs> so, so it's it's just a, like a matter of how how dark should I go here here in the the green parts here for example uh, and I don't want to go too dark, <laughs> you know, everything. This is, this is trial and competition. Hmm. And then I have this one I'm working on. Another big painting. I think it's nicer in, in reality. I don't know, but, but you know, the subtlety in the colors are. Well, are it really cool. looks good here on video as well. Don't worry, it really looks awesome. Okay, nice, thanks. Mm -hmm. And here is another one I'm working on, uh, the con one. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will put in something more, I can show you like this, uh, something more here, for example, with rocks to make it like bend it up a little bit so it stays flat like this. It's, it's just <laughs> so many thoughts about that. And here's another one from Forda, it's a tree. And here was a, a cloudy day. It's just um, very good. I, as when it's cloudy, you can come back and work on it for, for many days if you want to. And I, I made a small painting. I sold that, but 
for this big painting. Uh, that I could go back two times and work with it actually uh, on, on the same spot. And here is uh, Scotland. Uh, this is from Scotland. Uh, yes. So here is my table like this, and also like uh, a fireplace here. Here's a river, the small sketch study and the bigger one like this and i'm working on this still <laughs> as well we have a question from vesna vesna asks you uh, do you enjoy working large formats much more than a small ones and what do you think are advantages of each um i think i i appreciate both i uh, I appreciate both, and uh, it's different. It, it's quite different work, uh, different approaches when I work with those. And uh, when I work with the bigger ones, uh, bigger scales, I am always inside working with those, and that could be a great thing. Uh, uh, that could be a great thing to be inside with the calmness and everything. I would just like, do like this. Um, and uh, the smaller ones is more like working with details with small brushes and everything. You need to like concentrate in another way. But the thing that with the big paintings, the things that I like with the big paintings is that you can be more physical as you're painting. And you can also build more with the paint. You can be, uh, you can build up structures and everything. Um, so that's, that's good with bigger paintings. But of course, I, I also uh, can do very much with those small paintings. Um, yes, so I appreciate both, yes. Thank you so much for this answer. I was wondering, uh, do you enjoy also uh, ch changing motives sometimes? Do you do, you do human faces, human bodies, uh, birds? Birds, I've I, I've done I've done birds. Uh, lots of birds actually but since i i didn't want to be a bird paint bird painter paint, painter in that way it's i there is here in gotland you, we have like Niavala and Lars Jolson, uh that painting birds and they're it's their thing really uh, and they l have a great love for birds and i i appreciate their aesthetics uh, the colors and the anatomy and everything uh, but I'm not a bird person uh, necessarily, uh, so I I want now to like concentrate on the uh, landscapes and also human uh, faces and everything. I tried to make I've made a self portrait uh, back in the days, and uh, I've done things uh, in school. Of course, I, I we we worked with uh, long sessions. Uh, painting from life, uh, life models, uh, one month per model, per, like it was very much that I've done those things, I tested it, but it's, it doesn't like interesting, I, I don't find it as interesting as the landscape, and I'm very, I'm happy uh, at, uh, that I'm feeling like that, because uh, there is so many out there that, that appreciate uh, painting from yeah, they like humans and faces and everything. So uh, there is not so many working uh, from landscape here in Gotland, uh, actually. So um, uh, it's just me and then a couple of uh, artists in Gotland. Uh, Vesna also asks, uh, do you also find nature sound, sounds from nature inspiring while working? Yes, ab absolutely. I, I could never like... Uh, listen to an audio book or um, music maybe sometimes i've done it but uh, i want to like be able to capture also the the environment and the, the sounds and everything happening around me and sometimes uh, even though i have i i don't have music some sometimes people can sneak up behind like ah what are you doing or they try to not scare you but they do all right so and, and and also on places you you never you could never imagine that, that that people are getting there. But if you're if you're standing in one spot for two hours, 
there will probably be some someone going going in that spot. It's it's really it's really strange. But you can also like animals and everything. Uh, and I want to be able to to like see things and hear things. Yes, it's like that. Um, would, you, would you mind now? Uh, I will go through the through some of your photos from your website. And uh, if you, when I share my screen, tell me, do you see? So you can tell us about uh, each of those uh, paintings. Yes, absolutely. Let me just try to do that. Share. Yes, this is shared. Do you see it? Yes, I see it. All it's, right. Uh, should, and I should tell you a little bit about yeah, tell, this. Tell us about a little about every of the photos. This, this is a painting I did uh, last spring, and it's uh, from Vestergaard, and it's uh, west, uh, west coast of Gotland. And I use, I'm not used to go there painting, but I, I just was traveling south in Gotland, and then this, this just, this beautiful tree just stood there, and uh, far away from the road, so I just, but I just saw that, and I took a picture, and I went, went back. Uh, a couple of days later, when it was blowing like this, also, and I and uh, it's hard to tell in this photo, but I really uh, appreciated the green uh, transparency in the the sea, that close-up sea where where you have the waves and everything, and that green. So it's it's very interesting with those different blue colors and tr like first you have the very dark darkest bluish color that also have a lot of warmth in it. And it's, it's the forest out there, uh, the horizon. And then you have the greens and you have a listerine crimson. I have viridian. I have uh, also like earth colors, ochre and stuff in that blend. I'm doing not, not just one big pile of this green color. It's just like I have to, re I, so I don't, uh, pre-mix every color. I just mix them uh, as as I am painting. So I probably mix the same kind of the same greens all over again, but with different pigments also, and that makes it come alive a little bit and vibrate. So that's a, that's the thing we can talk about later uh, with uh, when we're talking about pigments and stuff and painting right. like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I, can I go? Uh, let's go one more. Mm. Uh, yeah. Is this the same tree? No. Yeah, that's the tree we saw downstairs. Yes. Uh huh. Then this. Mm. This uh, this painting I I made this uh, this summer actually, and I sold it down to, and it's in Germany right now. So uh, it's very very. It felt really good because I I just showed it in the, a couple of days later there was a, a woman from germany that wanted it so we sent it to germany and and this is from smyrgen also the same place that this uh, it's the same place uh, as this uh, big painting behind me um, and uh, here here i i used also photo reference uh, and i was there taking like smaller notes because it was so extreme weather so i just wanted the colors and be fast and then uh, i could work in this big format format it's a big painting really um and it was really it, it's very really fun to work with this because uh, i could be more spontaneous with the uh, with the sea and everything uh, i like the sea because i can be more spontaneous and it's it's something I really love with it. All right, let's. Yeah. Uh, this was a painting. Sorry, I'll go back. Uh, I'll go back. Yeah, you can go back to that. Uh, that painting, I, I saw this painting in 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 this uh, spring, but I wanted. It, I don't know if you if you're out there uh, having galleries or show showing your stuff, but it could be a good idea sometimes to. To like loan and and have your stuff and so it so you can show this uh, even though it's sold you can show your stuff because it can leads to other um, what do you call it mm, uh, businesses what do you call it? Updrag. 
uppdrag i Vana. Um, uh, what do you call it? Drag. I totally forgot what is that. <laughs> I just forgot the word. Yeah. Uh, Ivana, det är uppdrag. Vänta. Ja, så alltså, uppdrag Må, på målningar. Alltså. Att man kan sälja målningar som man ska göra. Vad heter det? Commissions. Commission, commission works. Så so ah, it, okay. it's re really, I can do a commission on this work, but still, it's Nej, a new, it's a, yeah, it's a new, com, it's a new painting from scratch made in original, but it's, and it's not going to be 100% of course, this painting, but it's, they, maybe they like what they see and I can do big changes, but it's from the same area uh, with waves and stuff, so I can, That's I find that very interesting also to be able to like work with uh, from the same idea make different stuff yeah all right let's proceed to yes. this one yeah when when uh, this painting when I did this painting it was uh, corona all over the world it was crazy crazy the craziest time uh, And so this was the opposite. When I worked with this, it was really calm in my studio. And I felt this was like, uh, like it was such a freedom to work with this uh, uh, painting uh, and especially in that time. So, but uh, still it's, it's, uh, it's a calm uh, painting as you can see with that light. And I didn't want to show the sun, but I wanted to show the sun reflecting on the sea like this and it's it's important i think in my paintings not to show too much so it's like not showing everything do uh, you understand what i mean it's like in interesting when you can like just you just know that that the sun is gonna be there uh, something ends up here and everything yeah uh, can we talk about the other set of paintings do you see this now i was curious about yes. the architectural ones Yes, okay. This is, this is a hotel in Strandvägen in Stockholm called Hotel Diplomat. And uh, that, the thing with that uh, building is, uh, it's just, I, I just think it's so, such a beautiful colors and I really wanted to capture those colors. So I, so I went out uh, on spot and it, it's really much, it, it's very much traffic and everything and people everywhere. And I'm not an exhibit uh, person. I, I, I don't to look at my stuff as I'm working uh, necessarily. So I just feel like, it feels sometimes like I want to, hello, I'm a painter, I'm standing here, hello. Uh, come and see, and I'm not like that. So it, it was pretty tough just to uh, concentrate and be able to capture those colors. And uh, it's the reds. And it's also the cool whites that I appreciate with this. And also not showing the ceiling, not too much. Some people think that this is, is and maybe it's a bit strange, is why, why, do, why just don't capture the whole building? No, I don't want to show you too much. This was, uh, this was what I wanted to show. And I made a big painting of this also. Um, for a couple, a couple that lives quite close to this building as well. So it's right, really thank fun. you. And this is Scotland, uh, from Scotland. Uh, much, very much drama, as it is in Scotland. It's, I think it could, would be like almost impossible to be a plein air painting in Scotland because it's changing so much, very fast, the weather. Mm -hmm. And this is from Smöjan as well. <laughs> There's many paintings from Smöjan and waves. Uh, mm. Okay, we, we've been through that folder. Let me just find the other, the other one. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your limestone paintings. I was wondering, do you, uh, does the limestone need a special, special treatment before you start or how, how is it done? Yes. Uh, The, the, I worked with limestone. Uh, that was the start, starting point of this, this idea. When I was young, I, I worked on a fabric, a big, a big place, uh, industry place with stone. And uh, I thought the, the, the work was very boring. 
Some, so sometimes I started to, to draw on the paintings and then on, 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 the, on the limestone, on the stones. And then I saw a landscape and I, I, I just started to do that. And then I wanted to pa be, paint on the, on the limestones as well. So I, I found this was a really, I, I wanted to just try this. And then I made easels for it. And uh, this idea, I, I came up with in like 2006. And then I just have been doing these uh, every year. And it's, it's a very pos pop popular uh, thing. Uh, just people, people tend to like it and the idea. And uh, when I, um, it's, I, can, I can show you a rock here. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's like, it's like this. It's just a rock flat. Just wait a second. Let me stop sharing the screen so we can see you bigger. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. It's a flat rock like this. They made those uh, uh, natural. Total. And then also, then I make, I used to make uh, my own primer gesso. Uh, it's made out of, you know, rabbit skin glue uh, and uh, uh, chalk. And I, it, it's, it's a recipe, you know, to, you need to follow. And then I, I make my drawing on the, on this stone. And then I cover it, the drawing with the rabbit skin glue, just so. Um, and the po pores in the stone are, um, it's not sinking in so much the oils when I'm painting on it anymore. So, so that's why I want to prime it. A little bit before and then uh, I can hang it and everything with uh, needles in the back with screws and everything so that's uh, that's how I prepare my small paintings uh, since yeah. you started uh, could you show us as you said the the, the craftsmanship uh, your materials your brushes and stuff how much time do we have now um so. usually about 10 15 more minutes and then we'll go into discussion even though okay yeah yes no, go okay ahead. then i can uh, then i should like i can come to the camera maybe <laughs> okay uh, okay the first thing i can talk about is uh, is the colors and i use uh, i really recommend i'm not uh, working with those guys okay i'm not i'm just I'm just buying, I just love good, good things. And Michael Harding, if you know that, uh, Michael Harding, Colo, that brand, Michael Harding. All right, it's, we'll write it down. He made, it's from England and he's making the, the best colors there is. And uh, uh, they, are, they are like a bit expensive, but that's how you just look at it as a painting, as a color. It's so much pigment in those colors. So it's, it's you can use them for so long and even though i have been uh, like painting these big paintings for like many years i can show you this this tube of like cadmium yellow uh, um, this is a lemon yellow cadmium and i i worked with this for three years and it's still so much in this tube so you can imagine like how, how much, but then of course, the white colors, the titanium white and everything, it's, uh, you use so mu very much of that, of course. So it depends also which color it is. And uh, this is my, um, my palette from Italy with my color, my color set settings like this. And it's, it's, it's my range of colors. It's uh, maybe I could wrote a list to you or something like that with what colors I use. But I, I can like, it's, it's, a, it's a color here uh, called warm white and it's uh, lead white, but it's not a real lead white, but it's supposed to be like a lead white. Uh, I'm not working with lead white because it's very poisoning, of course. And titanium white, lemon yellow yellow deep and then you have like an orange 
these all of these are cadmiums with this alizarin crimson uh, permanent and then you have burnt uh, burnt sienna and then these beautiful earth colors um, I, I, I used also like um, uh, and then also uh, this transparent uh, uh, oxide red, a viridian, cobalt blue, uh, ultramarine blue, and then also ivory black. Uh, so that's my colors. And sometimes I can use another color and then it's just a uh, guest on my palette, the guest color. But it's, it's, it's not like I, ah, uh, okay, I'm going to shift this to another because I, need to like learn how to treat every color. It's, they are, uh, Michael Harding's color, it's no, no substitutes or what do you call it, other substance in the colors that like dryers or things like that or wax. It's just clean pigment with lean oil. Uh, and that's, that's what you want actually. Uh, no extras, you know. Um, so um, that's, um, and they, they are like totally different uh, in their voices, these colors. Some are more impasto, uh, some are very grainy, uh, some, some, you know, it's, they, they are dry, slow dryers and then they are very fast dryers like Viridian. It's an expensive color also, and that's typical, all right? But, <laughs> but it's, uh, Viridian is a beautiful color as well. So I, I like this and I, I, uh, once you get to know how they interact with each other, uh, I will be able to do much more with the paintings, of course. Of course. Uh, uh, maybe I should like bring my camera with me, okay? Yeah. This. Here I have my table. My brushes are from Rosemary, like this, from England, and it's really, it's really good brushes. Uh, and it's some of my brushes are synthetics, and some are natural uh, bristle hair. Just uh, so I, I work with different brushes, and uh, then you have some mediums. I use walnut oil, um, tinseed oil, of course. Ah, yes, uh, these mediums. With um, it's all that like turpentine in it, and I have great respect for that. We're gonna talk about that also. Um, cold wax, bee, bees wax, uh, safflower oil. It's a very um, good oil as well slow dryer um, and yes I am a glass palette also and then this, uh, this, uh, this one I clean my brushes in as I'm working so I, I, I'm able to uh, you know clean it uh, very fast um, thank you so much for this Sebastian uh, Ivan I had a good question uh, what are the what are your other projects that you are uh, involved with and uh, your activities that you are doing? Are you, are you a member of uh, certain uh, associations and so on? Um, I'm. Uh, <laughs> what should I say? Um, I'm in up not a year right now, and that's uh, that's a very good thing. It's an art uh, community here in Gotland. We have. Uh, a special weekend when we are opening our studios and show our stuff and um, that's a really appreciated things and I think in in the springtime uh, otherwise I, I I used to work with a couple a, a gallery in Stockholm in Carla Plan it it was very great till but she was old so she wanted to like she was moving actually from Stockholm so right now I I just have my gallery, my studio here, and my guests and uh, my collectors. And I've worked so for, for many years now and trying to be social and uh, meet 
and you know my collectors and i find that to be the best thing to be yeah because i and the thing is that i necessarily don't like to like talk about maybe trying to commercialize myself and ah this is so good it's not about that when i show my pictures it's just more like when i meet people here in my gallery i talk about the craftsmanship i talk about the paintings I'm not, I'm trying to not talk so much about myself and my feelings before it. I, I try to like focus on the craftsmanship and people are, are tend to be really interested in that. And I can show them, you know, my palette and I can show them my, my ideas and paintings and talk about them. But I, they used to come up with questions about, uh, you know, different things and we can talk about that so it's just a matter of like being a nice trying to be a nice person and and then um and then i i'm a lonely <laughs> i'm just you know i have time I, I i feel like i don't have time to like be in you know bigger communities and be here and there and be very social because i have like i have my friends of course and my family especially with two kids and i i put so much time in with those kids like it's uh, I, I have like three days per week only with my kids to, to be with them and, and then I work uh, and I have the Sundays uh, with my whole family. So that's how I, how I, li I live. So uh, that's uh, I'm a busy person, but though I'm, I'm not a very like I'm a lonely man in one way. So, and I really appreciate to be here in my bubble in my own, you know, small world. Uh, and, and, and dreaming and create and that's important for me thank you so much for this intimate uh, insight uh vesna <laughs> has a question i will now open uh, open the discussion so everybody who wants to ask mm -hmm. a question can either unmute and just ask a question uh, or write it in the chat and i will uh, read it uh but vesna yeah vesna says uh, how much effort do you put in your social media channels um I was gonna say, you know, now I have, I am not doing anything for three weeks, I think, not anything. Uh, and it's, it's just a matter of, I, I, sometimes I push myself and I can, I feel like it's, it's a funny thing and it, show, and I think, yeah, content to have something new to show. And I want to, I, I, for, I want to wait till I have something to show, something new or something, instead of like putting in too much things uh, going on, you know, that. Uh, so I, I, I think uh, I want to have new content. And as soon as I feel like something is worthy to be shown, I will show it. Uh, so that's how, how, how I work, but I want to, put my effort into the actual craftsmanship and the painting uh, before I put uh, too much time into social media, even though I think I should put much more uh, maybe, uh, effort maybe uh, and time in social media, I don't know, but I appreciate Instagram and it's have been very, very important for me, but I have like 2000 followers and it's not much. I don't know how, how people manage to get like 50,000 followers many years ago how did they manage I, I, did they pay or they are very some are very good but it's it is it i don't know how they it's manage a, that many times it's a it's a script and it's a it's fake basically but many times it's true it's a, it's really uh, if it's really a celebrity but it's not something you should dwell <laughs> about no no exactly but it also also i i know uh, some an artist uh, klingspor and he's He's, he's not having very many followers, but he's 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 living on it and he's he's doing a great job. But I think he he is like he's not very. You need to like like be interested in that also to be able to to be uh, be putting things up um, with the, like every third day or something like that. And I should do that, of course, but I don't know. Um, I, I, I think it's, uh, I want to put my time into painting, really. Uh, we know. have, a, you have, a, uh, from, from Romana, Romana says, 
I'm glad that we had the opportunity to get acquainted with your art. Congratula congratulations on an interesting presentation. I wish you a successful painting career and many exhibitions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Now, questions and answers are open. So unmute yourself when you want. Ivana, would you like to say something? You can go on Swedish. <laughs> no, yes, I, I will. Yes, kaprova po engelska, and I will try on English because everyone must understand. So I, I was um, <laughs> typing something. So first, I can say like uh, thank you, Sebastian, for um, um, uh, your um, for you are our for you were our first uh, foreign guest and speaker. Thank you for taking us uh, through your uh, studio, allowing us to experience the space and atmosphere in which we are create and exhibit. Um, I have some questions um, because I, I was reading your uh, same or CV and um, I saw that uh, you have participated in uh, some auctions and that um, your works are part of some collections from you also talking, talked about. So if you could tell us a little bit more about that, like uh, what auctions and collections are we talking about and how does it work here in Sweden? Um, or, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I tried to, um, I was in I was in a public radio in Gotland actually, and that was an auction. Uh, I, I made uh, there was two times actually a radio show just, um, and the 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 money uh, were going go, goes to uh, children, poor children in the world, and it was a really great idea, and was really interested, too interesting, inspiring. Uh, so uh, I made I worked with the painting. Uh, live so people could see it and listen to it uh, and then also uh, like put in money and if they wanted to buy it so it was an auction in that way like well, it was two times and that was really appreciated and, uh, and a funny thing good thing uh, and then uh, different collectors uh, I had some some collectors uh, but it's it's I'm not want to be a name dropper and 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 I, I'm not having like those big names. And I had this couple of uh, people here this summer. They just wanted to know which collector to have, which uh, galleries did you know? You know my CV and and uh, I I don't know about about that. But I'm I'm just. Uh, uh, it, it, though uh, this this uh, summer uh, this spring uh, I will make this painting big to for for a guy in Furilen and he's uh, he's a um, collect art collector and he's probably a, a big art collector having a big house in Furilen uh, quite quite close to this place and he is uh, he. I make a commission for him. This painting was um, gonna be this uh, this size. So, uh, and he's an important man in uh, respected man in uh, you know art collector world. So that could be a great thing to add to the CV. But uh, I don't want to be like too fast of adding uh, people important thing on, on my on my CV. And I don't know. Um, uh, another funny thing was uh, in that movie we talked. I had a, I wrote, uh, I signed a re release a contract with uh, Lionsgate, and they are working with movies, you know, producing movies, and with Kevin Costner in the in that movie, and it could be a really good thing. Um, but I never saw my painting in it. But though we 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 maybe we will co cooperate uh, in, in the future, we'll see. But I. Anyways, they, they can use my paintings in the US for in movies. And that's a good thing. And that's a funny thing. So, um, yes. <laughs> Any more questions? Thank you. I have a question. Yes. 
I was wondering uh, how uh, how much time uh, does it take to paint uh, a painting uh, like uh, that one uh, behind you, a big one? Okay, uh, that's a very common question, and of course it's it's a uh, it's a question we all ask uh, when you see a big painting. How how long time? But uh, my answer is uh, uh, I. My answer is it's different. It depends on what I am painting. Uh, it, am I painting the seascape, or is it uh, me trying to portrait uh, in a tree or something like that? It's going to take make much more long, more time to make that tree uh, as it is. It's it's uh, off, often the case that it, that takes more time. But this one. Uh, was hanging this summer downstairs, uh, and people could look at it. Uh, it just, I just wanted to hang it there and then not looking at it too much. And then I just like, now I want to grab it. Now I want to work further with this painting. So now I will sign it when I feel it's finished. But as long as I, when I have my paintings, of course I can go back and do things with them. Uh, when I see some things, and uh, sometimes I feel like I should, you should like have paintings for two years working on them because you see things. But you have to, I have to think about also like you have to be able to get rid of paintings and sell paintings and then uh, be proud of them and think that I did my one hundred percent back then and stand for it. That was back then. I did my best. <laughs> That's the important thing. But uh, this, uh, so uh, sometimes it's just a matter of, uh, you know, 25 to 30 hours making a pretty big painting. Uh, when I, 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 and I'm talking about concentrated time, working with 100% dedication. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm a fast worker. When, I'm, when I am painting, uh, I used to forgot to breathe sometimes. It's just like, <sighs> like this. Uh, so I'm very into this, the, the painting. Uh, some people are more like, uh, you know, slower painters. And that's, that could be a great idea as long as you don't starting to like, you know, you know, paint and think about other stuff and just so soon away, you know, that can happen also. So, uh, and sometimes it just takes weeks, months, depends on uh, what I'm working at but one thing is very a very good thing to think about when we when you're painting is uh, that I can work with uh, lots of different projects at the same time I, I I mean I'm working on this one but I'm gonna put it away for two weeks okay I'm working with another one uh, and I put that away it's like writing a book or something that you need to like be objective not subjective, and uh, that's why you need to like take take uh, breaks from your paintings to be able to see things that you want to change. Sometimes you just come up in the evening and what what, what was I thinking about? She, I have feeling, I have feeling. It felt so good, but now as I'm seeing it, it's it's just bad or something like that. So uh, I'm not signing the painting the same day I'm fi finishing it. You understand what I mean? Yeah. I, I want to ask you uh, how many kilos uh, has this limestone canvas, let's say, <laughs> this canvas where you paint this limestone, how, how many kilos? Yes, how heavy it is. Yes, 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 how heavy it is. Uh, this is, I, I have, I have, this, this is canvas, so, so this, if this was uh, were, if this was in stone, it would be very heavy, of course, not uh, not, not very nice <laughs> in that we, way. But if you if know, it's it's one ton. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, quite uh, heavy, but still, I can hang. You can hang it on your wall and everything. And I made the like uh, stone paintings that big like this, also. I I made that, and it's 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 also nice. Uh, to paint on limestone or stone, yes. So it's it's heavy, but that's very heavy. Well, 
I think we'll, we covered most of the questions. I, I think I had something else I wanted to ask about terpentine, yes. You, you mentioned terpentine and you said something that you, you will talk about it later. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, yes. Um, I'm working, uh, let me see. When, I, when I'm working in this studio, it, it's a pretty big space, uh, uh, but still, when I'm, wash, when I'm working uh, and cleaning my brushes as I'm going on, I'm working, I, I use something called Gamsol and it's a mineral spirits and it's really pretty clean and it's not very much, you know, it's not so dangerous and it's, it's, it's pretty okay to work with in, in the environment, you know, it's not like very poisoning, it's good. Uh, so that's what I used to clean my brushes in. But then tur turpentine is, is tradition, of course, and it's, it's nice, it smells nice, but you should avoid breathing it too much. Uh, but I have, there, is, there, there are different mediums and you can really like be <laughs> uh, talking about these uh, recipes in, for hours and everything. So, but I like this and that's why I'm having it. But I, when I'm painting with those, I used to have a mask and I have <laughs> this, <laughs> I can show you. Um, this gas mask sometimes, if I'm working in bigger areas, I want to have this and then also good ventilation, to open up windows and stuff. So it's important to be able to, to work with these good things, but you have to pay respect to like have respect for it, but it's, it's dangerous as well. Um, I will pick just one thing. Yes. Uh, then you have heard about liquid. Those of you that paint, pa uh, painters painting with oils, you can use liquid to make it f flow more, the paint and uh, to treat it. It's, it. People tend to like that. And there I have a neomeglip as an uh, impasto kind of uh, medium. But this, uh, these ones uh, with, it's Galcud here also. This one, I, I get headache of this by this. And uh, they say that these are so much better than and, and not as harmful as and you know turpentine but i get headaches of this so um and it's good some sometimes it's good just to, to be able to smell uh you know uh in your studio to know how much it is in the air you know poisoning gases and stuff so yes um, well, i will uh, slowly then thank you for this uh, if there's no more questions specifically i will thank you so much for this presentation and we will now close the recording of art chakula but uh, let's stay uh, and uh, chit chat a little bit more thank you so much sebastian for this presentation and thank you so much for uh, letting us to be a part of your studio and your work and your life so thank you so much nice meeting you hope hopefully and ho i hope we will see each other sometime you are always welcome here. Absolutely. So just, uh, just call me when you're coming to Gotland. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> Thank you.